So in my previous few videos, guys, you've seen me set up well, add fish, I set up a while ago. Add fish to the massive four foot angelfish aquarium behind me. I did originally put some rams into this side thinking that it were German blues because they hadn't colored up yet. Turns out they're Bolivians, moved them across. This one's empty, but we will be getting fish for it soon. But as I said to you guys in the last video, if you haven't seen that, why not? Why are you not subscribed? Click the button, ding it and all that now. But we're gonna be taking Timmy. Timmy's a turtle. You can see him down here, oh, opposite. <laughs> there he is, this is Timmy. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> So anyway, this tank is miles too big for him for what he actually needs at this stage of development or growth. So what I'm going to be doing is just breaking it down, keeping everything that I've got in there and moving it across into the smaller tank over here. So this is basically going to be his temporary home while we set up the no water change ecosystem tank. A lot of you showed interest, so I thought I'd definitely do it because I love doing them as well and they're really interesting to watch develop. With that being said, there's a lot of different things I'm going to be changing around over the coming months. You know, I want to make sure that Timmy's got his own independent tank that's not just a shallow tank, like a proper tank. I want to do something really cool with that. But at the moment, we're not quite set up for it, so that can be put on hold. You know, he's only tiny at the moment, so as long as we can still provide the right environment for his size, we're all good. So we've now got the tank outside and it's filthy. <laughs> I'm disgusting, I'm so sorry. Look at the state of that. I'm gonna have to get like proper scrubbity scrub scrub on that. Is that even gonna work? No, I don't even think that's gonna work. Razor blade, that's what we need for this. Razor blade. Toolkit, I'll leave a link for this. It's really cool. Uh, razor blade. Lubrication. Okay, here we go. Oh, look at that. So, so satisfying. More lubrication. Like a hot knife through butter. Anyway, this is going to be really difficult one-handed, so I'm going to put you down. Yes. You need help with what? You build something? What? I'm really loving this wellies and pyjamas combination, Henry. You're rocking that look. <laughs> we now I don't know why I did that we now have a blank canvas which is sort of steamed up because it was outside it's inside that's how it works temperature causes that anyway a few things you might notice this tank for out <laughs> this tank for a start is too big for the stand that it sat on but who cares it doesn't weigh a lot number two that uh, well, there is no number two. I don't know why I said two. There's just one. One thing. It's too big. Doesn't matter. Who cares? Not a lot of water. You could probably fill this up with water, suspend it in the air, and it wouldn't make any difference. So a lot of people are always really worried about stuff like that. <gasps> you haven't put a mat down. I mean, I did put a mat down under this, and that's because I used to be worried about what everyone was going to say, and now it's like, it's not going to matter. <laughs> Unless you put your tank down on top of a stone, of course, which I suppose is quite possible. But yeah, we have now got... Pancho's tank ready, so it looks a bit weird, not gonna lie, with this kind of thing up here and then one light there. But that's alright because it's just temporary, we're gonna have something even cooler. Pancho, no not Pancho, did I say Pancho just then? I meant Timmy, obviously Timmy. Timmy is currently in there. So I made him like a little temporary home in there. And now we can go in this temporary home, so let me pick him up. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Hello buddy, you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Right, here he is, look. It is the little blighter. I don't know why I keep saying blighter recently, but how cute is he, guys? Close up, close up. Timmy, focus. Say hello to everyone. Hello, this idiot, he keep moving me around. Why? Because, Timmy, we're going to get you an even better home at some point. But in you go now, in this little bit here. Go, oh, you are free. Oh, you are upside down. No, you are good. Bop, bop. <laughs> Self-writing, self-writing turtle. Uh, you might notice there's actually this water here, a little bit murky at the moment, but I actually got it from the discus tank and one little guppy got in there as well, baby guppy. Will it survive? Won't it? Find out next time on MD Fish Tanks. But anyway, enough faffing around. Let's get on with our new tank build. So why is it an ecosystem tank? Um, I suppose that's just a fancy way of saying fish tank, really, because 
all fish tanks are ecosystems in a sense. So the difference between like a normal ecosystem, what I'm talking about, and a closed ecosystem, a closed ecosystem would be like, you don't feed it, you don't do anything to it at all. Well, it's never gonna be that, is it? Because I'm putting light into it and I'm gonna be topping it up with water. So I think the best way to describe it is an ecosystem tank because I'm not changing it, I'm not changing the water. What I'm doing is topping things up as like, hello? Oh, hang on, hang on, wait, watch this, this is hilarious. Oh, hello, are you- hello, I need help. You need help? Yeah. What do you need help with? Um, Riddler's back. What are you talking about? On what? The tablet. The tablet. What are you playing? Batman. Oh, okay. I better go help him, guys. It's probably more important than making fish tanks. Right, let's do this. Right, so yeah, I'm back. We've defeated the Riddler. But what the hell was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Difference between closed and open ecosystem. So a closed ecosystem has no inputs. Like, it's just left to its own devices sealed off whatever open ecosystem is more like a traditional fish tank but you know i'm not going to call it that because like i say i'm not going to do any water changes in this thing at all all i'm going to do is top it up to start with you do a couple just to get the system going while the plants are settling and all that and then boom you just top it up a little bit like once a week about an inch that's it i mean i will have a filter in it as well oh no he's coming again you okay <laughs> okay what now you need more help? Yeah. Why? What's wrong? Um, uh, I keep going up. You keep going up? Yeah. Well, what, are we, what have we got to do? Um, keep me to go down. You want to go down? Okay. Let's go. The key to the success of this tank is going to be a lot of substrate. Now, given that it's a narrow tank, I don't want loads in the foreground. So what I tend to do is create a little barrier with some rocks and then just pile it and all behind it and then let it sort of overflow the rocks as well. And then put the wood detail in, sticking up, blah, you know, just loads of sort of stuff going on. So let's just do that now. I'm around the storage area at the side of my house. This is all of the cereal stone we've got to choose from. So there's quite a lot. You know, we've got some nice big piece. This piece look, is just fantastic. Look at the detail on all that. So definitely want that piece. That's looking like a good piece as well. Yep, we want that piece. Some of them look too big. Like that's a oh, bit of wood as well. That's probably way too big really for the size tank we've got. Some nice little pieces. Whoa! Don't know why that made me jump. <laughs> like a massive spider. Yeah, okay, so we're just picking up a few. On that one as well, that looks good. And maybe a little one like that. Yeah, cool. A few details, a few pieces. That should be good. Well, hey, there you go. Just chuck a pile in on the left, chuck a pile in on the right, and you're set to go. Doesn't look good yet, right? No, that's okay. We're gonna chuck a load of stuff in the back, sand, gravel, mixing of everything. I don't know what to do. Should I keep the open foreground like sand, or should I fully carpet it and just chuck tons and tons of green plants in? <laughs> I just don't like that. No, I'm going with sand. Sand it is. Right, that's looking sweet. You don't want it too high because it's only a small tank, remember, and you can actually bank all of the sand and gravel and whatever we're going to use behind it up to a certain level because that's where you're going to be putting all your plants into. But first of all, I like to sort of get an idea of what wood I'm going to use as well so we can then place it in between some rocks, get some gravel to hold it down, stop it floating, that sort of thing. And now here is the wood selection. Look at all of this wood. I'm so spoiled for choice. But I think what I'm going to use is this juniper wood because it's not too spindly because it's not a massive tank so we don't want to take up too much space so we use something like that we've got some more yeah another nice piece look see it's quite uniformly matching as well is that right word uniformly yeah of course it is that'll do who cares okay so we've got some cool bits like that i think i've got some more as well yeah look there's got loads what am i talking about one there we've got another one there there's loads to choose from let's get that in Thank you. 
So you might see me fiddling with that quite a bit. Don't just settle for something, just keep moving it until you get it right. I could just see that it was all pointing up too straight and I thought, oh, we need a nice bit coming across the side, sort of linking the two parts. And it looked too weird. I don't know, like something clicks. You just keep fiddling around, moving stuff about and something clicks. Like for me now, what kind of wants something here as well maybe but again just go by your gut feeling and what you like there are some rules you can follow but who cares about rules like you're supposed to be having fun there's no fun with rules is there screw the rules just do what you want hey look at that guys look at that so we've got angles like that and that so they're sort of following a diagonal path all pointing to one central position sort of up here if you imagine so when you do that look you can see like sun rays it sort of comes from one point now i didn't actually do that on purpose at all but it seems to be the way i escape and that's why i get quite good success of it and even without realizing look we've got a diagonal path going down the middle that sort of follows the line of the wood like i'm not doing that on purpose um it's just sort of the way my eyes work i guess and it just means that you end up with something looking quite cool i think so anyway but we've also got loads of space here as well remember because we not we want a ton of plants in a tank like this a tank that cleans the water and takes care of itself needs tons of plants so we've got all this room all the way back back here or here you know in between these gaps oh that's that ruined <laughs> I'm going to glue all this down, by the way, guys, with some black silicon. It works a treat. I've done it in this tank, which is my, as you guys, many of you know, this is my angelfish aquarium. Oh, look at Guy Diamond. You beauty. Um, yeah, so all these bits of manzanita would have floated right up instantly. So I used black silicon to stick them to the rocks and they didn't move at all. Oh, that's not true, actually. This one over here just went blump. <laughs> but I put it back down, put some rocks on it, which is still actually on there now, but it would have sunk by now anyway. But over back to this one. So, like, some key points, like down here on that section there put some black silicon a little dot we can cover up later with a bit of moss or whatever same down here down on this bit here i'll press that against that bit there or whatever lift the rock up slightly and just and just lock it down because that would not stay like that i'd fill it up with water and you just have wood everywhere <laughs> it's happened to me before it will not happen again oh please don't happen again please now before we try and glue anything down i want to get all the gravel in the background area first because to be honest i think that will lock a lot of it down because if i lock down this big piece underneath the gravel that will pin that which will pin that which will pin that and then there and so on and so forth and then afterwards i can get the glue or or the silicon and just stick it to the rocks where is the gravel it's around here come with me so this is one of my little storage areas around the side of my house like no one comes around it so it's always a bit of a mess but you know it's, it's an organized mess so this is the gravel i want to use at the bottom it's like a coarse sort of gravel then we've got it going to fine and then the finest there that's actually a bit off the color that i want to use i want to use more of a sort of whitey sand so i'll probably get a whiter fine sand but this stuff's good and this stuff's good but we start off with the coarse first this one going in now Oh yeah guys, I just remembered I had a load of the volcano mineral left. This is basically just crushed up lava rock. It's nothing special. It's incredibly porous, but so it provides like a massive surface area for beneficial bacteria, which is going to be key in us keeping our water quality immense with only the tiny little filter we've going to put in here. And again, that filter is basically all that's doing is providing a little bit of water movement. So the bulk of the filtration is going to be done on these deep media beds that we're creating on either side of the tank. On top of this now, I'll just get progressively finer gravel until we're up to sort of of like well quite near the top to be honest we'll put it like quite quite high so that then all of our plants can start growing out of the water we can just get a nice big jungle coming out the top which looks awesome So I don't know how well that was coming across there, guys, but you probably could see I wasn't being careful at all when I'm putting that in. I'm just chucking it all in, piling it up. Like, I don't think there's any reason to be overly careful. We're going to cover it up with other sand anyway. And the little peaks of, like, detail and bigger bits of gravel all poking through all adds to the realism. I personally don't like a decorative sand at the front that's, like, perfectly clean. So what I mean by that is, if you look here at my uh, angelfish aquarium, you can see that the, the coarser stuff is at the back and then it grades out forwards to being more fine. 
I like to do that, it looks far more natural, unless I'm going for something like completely different, like a reef tank for instance. So it's not a reef, it's my freshwater reef, but you can see here I'm keeping it all uniform to give it that sort of unnatural look if you like. So the point of that was that I've got completely different, ow, always tripping over stuff. The point of that was that I've got completely different tanks side by side. But this one, I want this one to look like a tiny little slice of nature. We're gonna achieve that, so let's carry on. Right, so basically we've now locked in this piece. Look, that's locked in under the gravel. We've locked in that big bit at the back. This one's still loose, so that needs to be sort of glued down or siliconed down. This one at the back here, again, underneath the gravel locked down, and then this one's completely loose as well. So we can put a little bit of uh, silicon on that pit, pit no on that bit there and then this one we can you know again somewhere at the back somewhere like in there i don't know somewhere like that that would probably work quite well a silicon in that down so i've got the silicon here guys it's just like premium aqua uh, aquarium <laughs> aquarium silicon it's like you can't you have to let it cure first before you actually fill up with water so you need to give it about 24 hours but that's just the same with any silicon and you might also notice behind me guys look the reef aquarium is misting up now this is because obviously i put loads of benefit but benefit I'm really struggling to talk today I put loads of beneficial bacteria in there and then I put the rams in there for several days but then I took them out and moved them back across well not back across but across over to the to the angelfish aquarium so that will be a bacteria die off effectively so we'll be, do a big water change on that basically you have to restart the system again when the fish do come with more beneficial bacteria but that's okay not a problem you can buy it all in bottles now it's all good and it works very well So hopefully you guys can see there, look, I haven't used a lot at all. There's barely any, in fact, you can't really see it either, which is brilliant. Now the reason for that is we don't actually need it to be on there like fully permanently. I've just put it in there to lock it down whilst it becomes waterlogged and it'll just stay down on its own after that. So as long as it stays put like that for, oh, it's all over my fingers. Wear gloves, guys, wear gloves. Anyway, as long as it stays like that for a few days or up to a week, and we're all good. So that is looking great. It's now time to add that finer sand that we wanted to put on top. And this is the stuff I'm talking about. It's that huge Kugo Kamishi natural. What? I don't know why I'm showing you here. Let me just put it in the tank. <laughs> Right, admittedly, that is a ton of substrate in there. Well, it's not a ton, I suppose, but it's banked right up, as I said, on each side. That's because we can put in plants in there that are gonna grow right out the surface, so that's gonna look great. Most of that substrate, you're not even gonna be able to see after a month anyway. Not even that, probably a few weeks. Foreground, like I say, is gonna be more of a fine sand mixed in with the coarser stuff. It just gives a really good texture. And also, I'm gonna put enough into that foreground so that I can put even more plants in that as well. I want a bit more detail in the foreground this time, not just bare sand, bits of green here, maybe some reds as well. We've got lots of plants to choose from anyway, haven't we? So yeah, speaking of plants, what are we gonna put in it? Right, so we've got a load of the Tropica plants to go for with the one, two grow range. We've got lots of red in the Alternamp and Riniki Mini. <laughs> I hate saying that. And then we've got loads of greens as well. We've got Monte Carlo, we've got S Repens, uh, this one, which I've never used before, but I'm gonna use that as well. Got loads of hair grass still, more S Repens, uh, Rotala HR again. And then we've got all of these that are already sort of established plant, oh, terrible reflections, but all of these are all established plants that we can use as well. Some nice tall hair grass, at Eleocaris at the back there as well. Established stem plants, which is great. A little bit of limnophila there. I'm gonna take that out, use that one. But then if you remember me saying, guys, we're gonna have lots of stuff coming at the top. Well, more so on this side. I might have to, oh, I just knocked all of that about. That's all right, still sticking, still sticking. Um, I might have to just build this up a little bit more because I want the water level to be about there. So, and then I've got all these plants. In, oh, that's not showing it, is it? In here, look, this is like a little mini greenhouse I've been making for plants that I wanted to put immersed at some point. So they're going to be really good. We've got Ludwigia Super Red in here. We've got Hydroculture Japan there. We've got some Rotile at the bottom. Although this has all been growing in just humid conditions, you can see there, it's only had the root systems in the water. So 
that should work really well. It'll still have to convert slightly, but it, have, it will look awesome in no time at all. But before we add all those plants here, we need to add in our last layer of sand. So it's the fine stuff I was talking about. I've just washed some out in here. It's just it's just like a quartz-based sand. It's, it's nothing special at all. Um, am I going to do this without spilling it? Probably not. Take a scoop. Oh, you guys know how to put stuff in. Why am I going to even show you this? Look, ready? Oh, I spilt it everywhere. Okay, plonk. That's how you do it. It goes in. You push it around. Keep doing until done. <laughs> So that's now all the different types of sand and substrate and all that in, that's all in place. It looks quite flat at the moment, admittedly, but that's fine, that's just how it looks. Till you fill up with water, you can start mixing in those different gradings. You can start adding a few more broken up bits of cereal stone. All that detail will come right in when we add water. But at this point, we want to start adding our flowers, I was going to say. Well, that'd be cool as well, I suppose, but we want to start adding our plants in. I'm going to start off at the top and work my way inwards. I think the biggest impact is going to come from the immersed plants in this setup, so I'm going to make sure I focus on those first and then do all the detail plants all around those. So now we need to take out our plants that we've prepared from the greenhouse. First I'm choosing the Lobellis Cardinalis. I, I don't know why I'm trying to say that like an Italian. So usually in your aquarium this plant grows quite small but in its immersed state like now it's huge and it's going to look really good coming out the top of our ecosystem aquarium. Take the plant out the pot, break the rock wool in half and then scrape off the rest of it with your tweezers. Simple. We can now plant the plant, or plant the plants. We can now plant them into the top section, just like you would plant into a plant pot. Plant, 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 plant. But yeah, exactly the same way, guys. Be careful of the roots, obviously, and the stems. You don't want to snap them, but push them deep enough into the sand or the gravel so that it anchors them down, and then just push some of the gravel into the center, and that will keep them nice and upright. So already, just with planting those few little plants, it's transformed it into some cool little sort of beachy, natural, scapey thing already, in my opinion. Straight away, makes me smile. <laughs> right, let's just keep going. I've got no plan with this. All I know is just keep putting plants in. Big plants at the back, shorter plants at the front. That's it, that's all you have to worry about. One good tip though is if you put something on the left, you tend to want to put it on the right as well. Not in the same proportions, you tend to put the bigger stuff one side and then keep it sort of a smaller portion or a detail of it the other side. But again, this is one of these trial and error things. You don't really learn this until you do it. So if you're always thinking, oh, I need to learn more before I start this, don't worry about that. Jump in and get started. A quick shrimp update, guys. You remember in the previous video, I said how I was really excited to have some of my favourite shrimp, the Crystal Reds, you can see there. Well, yeah, there's two, and there, oh, there's one as well. Look, he's hanging upside down. But anyway, on that back wall there, can you see, look, there's three already, little babies we've got. Yes, there's three. I counted a, oh, that's gone funny. I counted a six in total. So that's brilliant to know that there's at least six of the babies. And that is cool because it brings my turtle up to about 10 plus crystal reds. Oh, there's one right there as well on the glass, look, which it won't focus on for sure. But anyway, right in the middle there. So yeah, over 10 now for sure. Over 10 crystal reds, which is brilliant. And how is Timmy doing in this? Oh yeah, his old bulb blue. So we've got that bulb, which is a proper UVB bulb. <laughs> UVB bulb. I can't say it. It's a proper UVB bulb. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, he's doing great in his new home. Um, I fed him last night. He's now hiding. So we can't. Timmy, come out. We want to see you. We want to see you, buddy. Where are you? There you are. Oh, there he is. Look, he's just hiding on it. Sorry, I've disturbed you. Sorry, baby. There was his, this seems to be like his new little house that he likes to stay in. And this little corner is where he likes best as well. But yeah, fed him. All good. Eating well. Doing really good. So that is great. And regarding the guppy cliffhanger, so far, so good. Doing all right. So yeah, Timmy, to be fair, doesn't seem to be that interested in him or her or whatever that guppy baby. Where's he gone? Oh, anyway, yeah, he's, he doesn't seem to be that interested. So hopefully... That will be all right. So yeah, that is looking great, guys. Those are the big bulky plants that I want to put in first. Next up, we have got the Rotala. We've got Rotala green here. I think that's going to look really good. Just planted each stem individually or a couple at a time into all the gaps everywhere. And then after that, we can put that Hydrocotyl Japan there because that spreads immensely out of water. Look at this. I put a tiny sprig of it in this. Well, this, is, this was going to be the Newt Paludarium which isn't probably going to be happening now, guys, unless we can end some sort of lockdown very soon and I can go places. But look, 
Look how well that spread. That was just a tiny little area here that had it. Oh, look, the moss is doing great there as well. Anyway, but it's going everywhere. It will eventually spread everywhere on there. But that will sort of happen on this set, this this aquarium as well. It will just sort of spread in and amongst all the gaps because there will be water as well. So it'll come down and spread across. But you have to keep on top of it. It does grow very quickly. But ultimately, you need fast growing plants in this type of aquarium that we're going for. Oh, come on come on this is starting to look very exciting now isn't it guys you can really see where i'm going with this now the reason we keep all this really densely compact like this is as it grows it will always try and follow the sort of the water line that will be flat on top of it it'll try and go sideways left right up well, not up but forwards and back but if you keep it all compact in like this i'll even fill in some more of these gaps as well um this one's really tightly compact look in the planting the reason I'm doing that is because it all grows as one, if you like, and comes upwards then rather than across, which it will try and do. So that's the best way to plant, guys. If you want immersed growth, dense. It needs to be dense and near the surface, and it will grow up out of the water in no time. All these plants, by the way, can grow out of water. Aquatic plants grow out of water. That's how they're grown before they're delivered to you normally. So don't worry about them dying off or anything like that. They will go through some sort of adaption process, but they will always eventually adapt. You might get a few die-off leaves, like something like this might die off, but then you just trim that leaf, and where you trim it, the point like, say like that new shoot you can see there, if that's out of the water, it will just continue growing as it is now. Aren't plants clever? They're so clever. So the best thing about an ecosystem tank is that you can just set it up, sit back and just watch it. You don't have to do anything to it for like a month at least, other than some water top offs, of course, because you know, you will get evaporation. But that is it, literally that's it. I've covered the whole thing up with this cling film or shrink wrap just to keep the moisture in because I ran out of time. But you know, today is a new day and we can plant all the plants. Plant, 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 plant. There's a... How do you say that about sounding like an absolute moron the submerged plants are now going to be going in so at the moment it looks like a really cool sort of beach didn't it it looks like that film with leonardo dicaprio the beach oh, life's a beach anyway we can get this off now look at oh no i'm ripping up all the hardscape here as well let's get those plants in <laughs> that sounded really creepy Right, so I'm going to start with these plants. I've shown you them before, but I'll show them again quickly for those of you only just sort of starting to watch the series. So we've got Altonanthra Mineki Mini, which is like a really good sort of pinky red plant. It actually looks like this here, which is so cool. And also under this light, it looks like this here. So yeah, it's a really nice plant. Give some more details at the side. So I've got like three pots of that because over this side is like a bigger island if you like so i'm going to put more on this section and then you need to obviously put a similar plant or the same plant sorry but a smaller amount on this side how about if i got rid of all this misting wouldn't it hang on yeah so yeah on this side loads in that section that section underneath there just for the red sort of pockets keeping it in pockets rather than sort of putting it everywhere i've got deeper bits of sand in these sections here and there and also in and amongst these round rocks here they're not round don't know why i said that but there's loads of room for some like plants there this is the s repens that's going to look great in like a section like that but basically i'm going to go for this whole sort of bank sections either side just full up with plants and then nice open foreground So S. Repens is an absolutely stunning foreground plant. It's so good. Just keep it on its own and make it a real focal point. And as I've said before, guys, in low tech tanks, it's always best to keep big clumps of plants together. I just find I have much better success doing it this way. Look at that. I just opened the lid off of this and it's just exploding out. I mean, how good is that plant? So, oh, I'm spilling it everywhere. Anyway, what I'm gonna try and do is keep these in big portions and so not split them up too much. I'll probably split this one into two and then I'm gonna place it right in this area here because I've got a really nice piece of needle leaf or, you know, um, trident uh, fern to go in this section. And I think 
the, the greenness of the trident fern there and then you know the pinkness of that right next to it in that section is going to be really good for the eyes to see that really good for the eyes to see what does that even mean So Trident Fern is the smallest of the Java Fern family. If you're going to be doing a small scape like this one, it works really, really well. You'll be surprised actually how big normal Java Fern can get. You can take over a scape very quickly. When I say quickly, obviously, I mean within months, but <laughs> you get the idea. Now, I'm not using too much Java Fern in this scape because obviously we want to be very stem heavy. Doing it this way means we can use up nutrients in the water very quickly, which in turn should stop any sort of algae growth. Oh yes, 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 yes. That's exactly what I'm trying to go for. Looking good, both on both sides. Again, looks a little bit weird at the moment because we're missing a ton of other plants. Still need to fill this section in. The middle section as well, I'm gonna bank it up a little bit at the back and just cover that area in hair grass. That's gonna look great. But I've got some Rotala HR here, which is the one that goes really red. Probably won't go really red under this light because we've, it's not like a high tech light or high powerful light, if you like, or high energy even. Um, but it's still gonna make them look really good. They'll probably go more of a sort of orangey yellow color and that's gonna look really good for just more variation. I'm gonna plant them in this section here near the top part of the bank. They will grow really tall and they will also grow out the water at some point as well. But again, you want them near the back because it's a, a background plant, it's gonna grow tall. Only short plants come in the foreground. So many people ask me that if the HR needs like CO2 or high tech, now that's not the case at all. It just will grow differently in those conditions than to how it's gonna grow in this one. So it's gonna grow a little bit sort of thinner leaves if you like, and it's gonna be less red, but it will still grow nicely. At the end of the day, it's still a Rotala species, which is an easy plant to grow. Now I've also got some Monte Carlo here that it comes out of the pack just like that. You know, it just sits in one of these pots like that, grows in the nutrient. I'm gonna keep it all together as one. And I found a nice little spot I want it to go right here and just just pushing it in between the rocks there so that they sort of pinch it in place and that'll just grow really nicely there just leave it as it is and it will sort of spread its way out and that'll look really good i'll do again i'll do another one on this side probably in this area this area or here i'm not exactly sure yet because i want a load of plants coming in here right that's looking great to me so far yeah so i added this little pocket of monte carlo on this side that looks really cute now i'm just going to cover the whole lot now in hair grass like the background bit in the center i've got some of the long hair grass i'm going to put that in there and then the short stuff all coming forwards i'm still going to keep the foreground open but there's going to be little bits of details here and there i've also got all our details rock to add in at the moment as well but I'll do that after I've planted the plants because it's just easier So there is loads of little pockets of hair grass there. Now you might be questioning how they're gonna get nutrients. Effectively, this is just a completely inert substrate. It's just normal sand and gravel that I haven't put anything else into it. Now, because it's an ecosystem aquarium, we wanna keep the nutrient levels low and let them build up over time. And that's how we can get away with no water changes. So what will actually happen, and I know this because I've done it before and this is what happened before as well. Some of that hair grass will just die off. And for some, reason i can't explain <laughs> some of it will do really well and overall though it'll just over time just start spreading and going in its own directions that's kind of why i've planted more than i usually would is because i'm expecting some of it to die off some of it to do well just how it goes no idea why hey i'm not a scientist all right <laughs> is that the right word would it be a sign no herbologist that's the study of herbs surely i don't botanist botanist that's it isn't it botanist yeah i think so right that's enough plants for the minute let's fill this up with water i can add in some more detailed ones if i want to at that point but as always i'm gonna get the water from the discus tank which is looking terrible but that's fine i'm gonna be doing a whole makeover on it quite soon let's go and have a look so here is the discus tank it's looking absolutely terrible but that's okay because it's super healthy and we're gonna take some oh <laughs> boys are in there <laughs> what are you doing whoa <laughs> Oh no, Power Rangers mode. Anyway, yeah, let's get some of the water out of here. Well, you can see that I've got these plants ready to be put in the background. I want to take out all the long background stuff and then put these in the background. I think that's going to open up and look super fresh. Yes! <laughs> Whoa! Watch that. Okay, that's... Do we jump on the sofa though? No. <laughs> We 
We're looking good so far, but I've only gone and forgotten the Hydrocottle Japan again, haven't I? I just spat everywhere. <laughs> so I can add that in now. Also, there's a load of gaps and areas that are standing out more to me now for some reason that there's water in it. So I'm going to add in some of the uh, Limnophila I've got down in the tank storage tank, the storage, plant storage tank. And they're just going to fill out some of those gaps, like in this section here and on this side as well. There's, oh, so hard to show you. Down there in that section, there's loads missing. So let's just get more plants, just more, more. And then we can start adding the fish because I'm going to be doing a fish in cycle again. I've also got a little filter that's got a bit of the, the sponge from another tank. So it's kind of like pre-cycled if you like, but you know, we're only adding two fish to start with anyway. Oh, that's looking really good now. See, I've added a few little pieces there extra of Limnophila, just because they give it that really sort of vibrant green look that I really like as well. Mixed in with the color, you know, that looks really good, doesn't it? And now we've got our filter to add. So we've got this tiny little thing here. Look, it's not really gonna be doing any sort of biological filtration at all. It's all mechanical, just a little bit of water movement and I'm gonna drop, ah! So look, it's just gonna sit on this little corner pit here like that i'll probably tuck it back a little bit to be fair you won't even see it eventually when all the sort of stems and that grow over that way but look you can barely see it and it's just going to provide a little bit of water flow in that front area i mean it is still a filter so it is a filtered tank but come on i mean is that really going to be doing anything still so i have done this sort of setup before without a filter completely but you know this tiny little thing here i've got it i'm going to use it but this is going to fill in and look absolutely brilliant oh he's popped up get back in there okay let's get that filter on And we are away guys. I mean, currently I'm, I'm floor gang, but you know, who don't want to be floor gang, right? But this is looking great already. But what kind of ecosystem tank would it be if it didn't have the floating plants? Now I'm going to use a mixture of floating plants. I've got that awesome water lettuce just dotted around everywhere at the moment. And I've got duckweed. Duckweed is really good for a tank setup like this. You know, in recent months, duckweed has become the bane of my life, a pain in the butt. But for something like this, it will work absolutely perfect. And fortunately, we have loads of it. Look at that lot. It's, <laughs> it's like a little swimming pool of green. <laughs> so yeah, there's the water lettuce, obviously, mini water lettuce, and there's the duckweed. So I don't want to use too much because I don't want to cover the surface of the new aquarium. I just want to have it so that it's in certain areas and then let it grow itself to cover the surface and then remove and that's how you can exp export all the sort of waste from the tank and that's why you don't need to do water changes because you're still taking out all the nitrates and that sort of thing through the exploitation of the duckweed Oh, oh, no, it snagged. La, la, la. Oh, snagged it. I'm snagging it everywhere. I need a smaller one. I need a smaller one. Get out. Okay, so I found a smaller one, but is, is anyone else just like me? And they can never, ever find anything, ever, ever. Like, I was looking for a little shrimp one. You know, I've shown you guys it before. It's like, it's like a little white circle. You know what a circle is? It's a little white circle one, and I can't find it anywhere. I literally used it, like, today? Was it today? Maybe yesterday? I can't find it. It's almost the same with the tweezers and that as well. Actually, I've got this set here, right? I've got this little thing here, so I could hang on my little uh, shrimp net. It's not even in the place that I bought for it to go on. Like, there's no hope, there's no hope. But that doesn't matter, and we're not gonna let it spoil our day, are we? Even though it's really annoying me. I might just buy five of them, just gonna get five of them. They're like two or three quid, which is like, like three dollars. So I'm just gonna get loads of them, just dot them around the studio. Then I can't lose them ever again. But yeah, I'm just gonna use this little one, guys. It means I can get in and around all of this wood we've got here and get some of this duckweed out. Oh, 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 oh. Okie dokie, now we can see what we'll, what was that? 
<laughs> oh, good. <laughs> okay, so now we can see what we're working with. Guys, it's done really well. Come on, I've not touched this tank at all. Deliberately, I wanted you guys to see what happens if you don't touch a tank for two weeks straight or three weeks or whatever it's been. A lot of my tanks nowadays don't have duckweed in them, but a tank like this that we want to do no water changes in, apart from the initial setup ones that we will be doing in a minute. In these sort of tanks, you do need to use duckweed. Well, you don't need to, but you know, it's massively beneficial to use a duckweed. As you've seen, it covered the surface. It used a lot of nutrients to create that duckweed, and I've just taken it out of the tank and dumped it into there, which is good because now that waste is gone. Apart from all this ugly waste at the bottom that's sitting there, and that's because there's no flow getting over that area. But once we get some fish in there and some quarries and all that on the on the bottom, that will, will be looking great. Exactly the same was in this tank here, actually, to be fair, guys. I remember when I didn't have any fish in here at all, loads of waste was collected in this area as it went through its diatom phase. So that's exactly what's happening here as well. It's a quartz-based sand, so therefore you do get diatoms completely normal and i've kept it all there just to show you guys realism and what to expect from your own tanks and not to go ah my tank's brown and looks ugly because <laughs> that's not the case at all is it we can easily sort this out Right, well that's freshened everything up a little bit. Well, quite a lot to be fair. Look at that foreground now, much nicer. But you can see that I've barely taken out any water. Just enough to siphon off those diatoms in the front area there. And it's just a lack of flow that's basically causing it. But now we set that back to how we want it to be. We can actually just top the water up a little bit. I wouldn't really class that as a water change. Guys, you don't want to be doing big water changes on ecosystem aquariums like this. The plant life in there is massive in terms of, you know, the volume we've got. So that's going to be doing all of the cleaning and the filtration anyway. You don't need to worry about loads of big water changes in this type of aquarium. It just, it won't, it won't settle. It won't do its thing. And in fact, by doing a big water change, you'd massively upset the balance anyway i've done it before and it just went misty and horrible bacteria die off because obviously there's still lots of snails in here i mean you can see one big one there but there's loads of snails producing waste and actually been cycling the tank for the past few weeks which is why it's actually now fine for us to start putting our fish in i'm doing that left and right thing again sorry guys it's just how i sort of stand and move when i'm talking but yeah i'm very impressed with how this one's gone i mean look at all of this already this emerging plants are just growing look on top there's all those sort of extra shoots coming off and that's just looking really good already i would say this is probably the most successful start to like a, an ecosystem or no water change aquarium that i've ever done has to be for sure you know a tiny little bit of diatoms i'm happy with that look how easily we got rid of it so far absolutely so good look <laughs> So just so far, so good will suffice there, I think. So on this side, we've got some of the Ludwigia. Well, before I just messed around with the water level, that was poking out. You can see that's kind of like emerged growth there. On this side, we've just got the uh, Lobelis Cardinal. Why do I say it like that? Yeah, that, anyway, that's poking at the top. There's loads over this side, look. But it's quite cool having the two sort of sections. One's, one's on catch up. One is absolutely killing it. Also, the AR Mini down here. Look, look at those roots all coming down. That's doing incredibly well. I'd like to see it a little bit more red than that. And as we fill in a bit more with, you know, plants, I will probably bring this light down a little because as we get more coming out the top, it'll actually get more gloomy underneath, which means we can increase the light intensity and that'll just make everything just go into turbo mode. <laughs> but with that said, we've now actually got to start adding some fish to the aquarium to stop all that build up of the diatoms again and get the water movement, get the cleaning crew, all that sort of good stuff. But rather than me receiving or going out and buying completely new fish, I've already got some fish here that I want to put in there. Well, of some of them anyway. There's some of them I'm going to have to go and get, like Corys, because I don't have any Corys. And I want to get some small Corys, like Pygmies and Pandas. I think they're going to look great if I can try and find some of those. Might be a little bit difficult at the moment, but at the moment we've got, down in my little plant storage aquarium, I've got a couple of my favourite rice fish I kept. There's two in there, actually. One sparkling grammy, which I didn't put into this tank because... <laughs> which I didn't put into this tank because there's two in there, it's small size, I didn't want any fighting and I knew that these two got along because they were always in the same area in this tank and that one sparkling grime was always over the other end so I imagined they'd set up some kind of territories, I didn't want to mix them in this one but he's already, do oh god I'm moving around a lot, He, <laughs> sorry guys, he's doing really well in this tank with, with the, the life that we've got in there at the moment so I think at the moment what we should have, there it is yeah, a female endler there's a male ender as well. I don't know where he actually is at the moment, but there's a female endler. There is the 
I think is a male sparkling grammy actually, it's quite hard to tell, but it's really colourful this one when we move out some of this duckweed and everything. We've got two of the rice fish, um, there's only one there at the moment you can see, but there is another one, he's normally down here somewhere. If I tap, sometimes they come to the top because they think it's feeding time. Like they're all getting ready to be fed now, I will feed them, feed them after this because I've taught them well. But yeah, so there's all the life that's in here is going to come out. I'm going to move these plants into another plant vat, if you like, and that frees up an aquarium, guys. And guess what? This is actually the uh, water box aquarium, and it's actually perfectly set up for what? Salt water. Maybe, maybe. Hey, hey, hey. But obviously, to do that, I need to try and find some space. Now, I can do that. That is possible. Obviously, I've got the other studio opposite, which is going to be like for the... I'm pointing. You guys don't know where I'm pointing. I'm pointing to the other side of that studio. So that's going to be like the reptile room, but there's space down the side for sort of nano tanks and things like that. Maybe we could put the desk in there and we could put uh, this racking in there. And then that would mean that I've got more space as well to put up uh, in, in this area here. There's actually quite a lot of space here. You probably can't see it on, on camera, but there is a lot of space in that area. So I would like to do a cool little uh, nano reef. I think that'd be quite fun. I've got the lighting for it. I've got the tank for it. I'd need to get a skimmer and stuff like that. You can do it without a skimmer. I did it before. It did work well, but I'd rather just get one now. They're not that expensive, are they, for the little nano tank? So I think that'd be something really cool to do. And I think you guys would like that as well. But anyway, let's just get some fish in this aquarium. So I've taken all of that water lettuce out because I'm going to be using that in another scape another time. Water level's a little bit low, but there's still tons of water and plants in there for these like three or four fish that I've got. So that's all good. It's all going to be changed around anyway. Oh, look, we've got a friend. There's one of our really nice rice fish. So I kept the two most sort of yellow ones because I knew I was going to want them in the future. I can see the grammy there, look, and I can see the other two down the bottom there. And I think the male end is around the back there, but let's get them out. Let's get them into their new home. So we've got all five of our fish. We've got one female endler. We've got one cool little male endler. He's got like orange fin with like purpley bits on him. And then we've got our two cool little rice fish and our sparkling rice fish. <laughs> we've got our two little rice fish. That's how you say that word. And our sparkling grammy. And this is about to slip out my finger. So I need to put it down quickly. Oh my God. So the fish have obviously been down in that vat at the bottom there. There's no heater in this one, by the way, guys. It's just been, you know, ambient temperature of the room which is absolutely fine for the fish we've got here. I mean, they can be kept at warmer temperatures, but 20 degrees is good as well. So temperature out there that they're at the moment. Yeah, that's that's what it, that, I've just taken this out of there. So it's at 20 degrees centigrade, which is like 68, I think, Fahrenheit. And then the temperature in this tank should be about the same. There's not gonna be a lot in it if there isn't. Yeah, so that's staying at 20 as well. So perfectly matching temperature. That means we can put them straight in, straight away, everything all good. Now, just a quick note on sparkling grammys, guys, and their temperature. So mine are kept at 20 degrees. Now, the recommended range is more like 22 upwards. When I bought my sparkling grammys about six months ago, maybe even longer, they were in a tank that was at 20 degrees. So that's why I bought them home, put them in 20 degrees. They've been fine ever since. I mean, even these ones in this, oh, there it is again. Even these ones in this tank, 20 degrees as well guys 20 degrees they were down there and this tanks 20 degrees as well so you know it's good for me hopefully that'll be the same view but always ask the temperature that your fish are being kept at when you buy them because that's most likely what they've been sort of bred in and that's why they're surviving well in the shop Well, this is great to see guys that they're already out of the front. The sparkling karami isn't though, because they are a lot more shy creatures. Kind of like a little bit more intelligence if you ask me as well, but I think he's hiding in at the back somewhere. But these guys already enjoying life at the front. Their own little crew. I like having a good little mix of fish, but obviously that's not enough, is it? We're gonna need at some point to go out and get the quarries. Maybe we could do like a quarantine fish buy or something like that, show you guys what it's like at the moment to buy fish in quarantine. Maybe that's a good idea. Let me know if you think that's good. But these guys are instantly doing fantastic and that's really good to see. It's great to see them in a proper tank instead of like the plant vat on the floor because obviously all I'm doing is going down there to feed them and checking on them every now and again, which isn't really like enjoyable for me. I mean, I don't expect the fish really care, to be honest. They had a nice plant to tank either way, but 